about everybody. Can we just clap our hands and give God glory? Amen. We come to bless the Lord for this Lord's day. So everybody just put your hands together. We're going to praise the Lord on one accord and give Him all the glory. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah is the highest praise. That's when we come together. Come on, clap your hands, everybody. Hallelujah. Somebody wave their hands in his presence. Psalm 6 says this here. We have come to this house, gathered in his name to worship him. We have come to this house, gathered in his name to worship him. Come on, everybody, sing it. We have Thank you all for coming to be a part of Inspired Church. We welcome you all. Those who are here, you can have a seat. Uh, those who are watching, uh, we thank you for coming on and being a part of uh, today's sermon. We yes. are concluding our sermon series 
uh, entitled The Lord is My Shepherd. This is the conversation. This is typically a conversation that Shamika and I have at the house when we're talking. So we're letting you guys in our house and what that conversation looks like. And what we do in the conversation part is that we bring about points that we, um, that maybe that were highlighted in the house or we had conversations about or that were insights that we had. And so we share those insights with you all in a conversation that Shay and I have. And uh, we pray that you guys be blessed by it. Amen. Amen. Uh, Shamika going to go into prayer and then we're going to go ahead and get into the word. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for today. We do thank you that we have the privilege and the opportunity to come into your house and magnify and glorify your name on today. We do thank you for sending your word when you knew afar off that we would need help, we would need a promise to hold on to, amen. We would need to be encouraged and we just wanna say thank you for sending your word. I pray, Lord, that the words of Patrick in my mouth and the meditations of our hearts will be acceptable un unto you. I pray, Lord God, that all of our hearts will continue to be pliable and tender to continue to receive your word on good ground and that it would take root and bring forth fruit in our lives. Let that fruit be bountiful, God. Let it be plenteous in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, that you will be pleased and honored as we go forth on today and that as we uh, just continue to just uh, bask in your presence. Yeah. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we love you. Amen. Amen, amen, man. So here I have an announcement first before we go into the message. Uh, if you have not registered for next week's next week will be in-person service again uh, if you have not registered for uh september the 5th i think it's september the 5th in-person service we ask that you please do so please register ahead of time for that and this wednesday we will not have in-person service uh which is next wednesday this wednesday mm -hmm. this week this the wednesday we will not have uh, in-person service this Wednesday as well so now listen this conversation that Shamika and I are gonna is gonna are, are go, that we're going to have it's not a flow so I don't want you to kind of look at it it's the points are kind of probably gonna bounce around a lot just just so we trying to get this out but this is actually how we talk at home so that y'all enjoy it and if you don't enjoy it act like you do enjoy it I guess <laughs> All right, so, so one of the things I wanted to get wait, out wait, wait, that wait, was... Wait, 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 before you get started. Go ahead. I do want to do want to share... Your I, <laughs> <laughs> I do want to share the, the, the blessing that, it, that, that, that I experienced, or we experienced, in going through the Lord is My Shepherd sermon series. Mm -hmm. I almost said our shepherd. He is my shepherd. Amen. He's my shepherd, and I get to share him with you all. Amen. Amen. But it is really an, an enjoyment. Okay, so, so, so here's, here's one of the points that I wanted to make. One of the points that I wanted to make, remember Paul, had, Paul went to Athens and he was talking to a group of people. But there were three types of people in that one particular group. There were people who accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord, Master, Savior, and Bishop of their soul. In other words, Paul was talking to, uh, he was talking about the resurrection and he was witnessing the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And there was one type of group in this, in this one group, and they were the people that accepted the message of the resurrection. Then there was another group, they were kind of like, yeah, Paul, I feel you, I, uh, but I don't really know. Let's talk about this a little while later. That group is the group I call the agnostic group. So agnostics are people who, it's not that they don't, it's not that they don't believe that there's something greater out there. They do believe there's something greater out there, but they're just not quite sure of who it is. And so they're a little bit agnostic about their approach to God and what it is, and particularly the church arena calls it agnostic. Those are people kind of, you know, we're kind of there, but we're kind of not there. So those are the people that Paul was talking to and they said, I understand what you're saying, but let's talk a little while later. Then there's the atheist group, I call the atheist group. This particular group is the group, they did not accept the message the, uh, of the resurrection message that Paul had preached. And they actually scorned or they laughed at Paul when he began to preach about a resurrection. They were like, man, what are you talking about? This is, it was foreign to them. Now, don't, don't get misunderstand. They were talking about many gods, but then when Paul began to let them know about this unknown God, and then he began to explain to them about the resurrection, it was something that they couldn't grab. And so mm -hmm. for me, I was saying, this is, all of us, we're, we're all some point, now remember, we're all some point in our lives we are accepting of God. In other words, we, uh, we, we trust God. So certain points in our life we accept, we trust Him with everything, we got it, bam. 
there are certain parts in our life that we are, we're kind of agnostic toward God. It's like, I kind of trust you, but then I don't trust you, and I, I want to trust you, and I, I like, uh, what is that? And so we're agnostic toward some of the things in God in our life. Then there are certain areas, and we got to be real honest, there are certain areas of our lives we just, I just, man, I just don't trust you. I, and I don't know what, what happened that made us become agnostic or atheist toward God. In other words, we, we kind of trust and don't trust, or we don't trust them at all. Maybe something happened at church. Maybe the pastor did something. Maybe the choir member did something. Maybe the, the, the mother board did something. There was some type of offense that happened in church. And if these are supposed to be the representatives of God and God okay with them people, with these people acting like this, and they did this to me, then I don't want that. You can have that. That's what that is. I don't want that. And so, so... We, we, we are all, in my opinion, we are all these particular people or in some area of our lives. Now, here's the truth. <laughs> the truth be told is the reason why we are all these areas uh, in our lives is because ultimately, remember, it says the Lord is my shepherd. So the reason why in some areas I accept him as shepherd or I trust him as shepherd, the reason why I'm, I'm kind of back and forth with him as shepherd in our life, the reason why I don't trust him as shepherd in our life, and the ultimate reason why is because we have not made him the Lord. Because when he is the Lord, the Lord, if you think about a Lord, you think about a king, there is no, there's no, like you don't get to say anything back. Like it's just, if the Lord says this or the king says this, then the word is bond. It is what it is. And so God has allowed us, thankfully, to begin to, uh, to, to develop this relationship with him so that he can be, check this out, so that he can be Lord in our lives. And that's the mercy of God. Because really, really, it should be, especially for those of us who accepted Christ, man, like whatever, it, like it, it is what it is. But, but, the, but the mercy of God is that he gives us, he gives us enough grace to get it right with him so that he can, we can develop this relationship with him so that the Lord can be our he shepherd. Is, he's merciful. Uh -huh. Yeah, he's very merciful. And, ex and extending that compassion because the truth of the matter is, like you said, he could have zapped us. Right. Like, you out. So, so here's, so this, so listen, y'all got to do this. This is, I'm going to tell you again, but you, you have to do this. So you get home and I want you to look at all of the areas of your life. What area in your life that you do saying, God, he is like, I accept him. It is what it is. What area of your life that you kind of back and forth, you don't, you like, you're not sure. What area of your life do you just, I don't trust you, God, here. I don't trust you with my wife. I don't trust you with my family. I don't trust you with my future. I don't, I don't trust you with my job. What, what are those areas in your lives? And I want you to jot those down. I want you to write it down. And then I want you to pray about it. I want you to talk to him about it. Now, first and foremost, this is just, this is my opinion. First and foremost, pr prayer is primarily for relationship building. Now, I know we use prayer to heal and to, to, to set free and to bind and to loose and to uh, trans transfer and all that kind of stuff. But primarily, if I use prayer for relationship, then the request is a little bit different. In other words, if I'm just using prayer to get to know him, I know his character, I know how he thinks, I know what, the way he goes, then, then I can make the request. This is, this is, this is good, because when you have children, they request certain things from you. And sometimes we say no. And we'll tell them, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, the answer is no. Why? Not right now. Right now you don't need to know the answer right now. Just trust me, the answer is no. Mama, daddy know what they're talking about. So then when we're using prayer primarily, not only, primarily for relationship building, and we make the request known unto God, and the answer happens to be no, because I know God, or I trust God with everything, I've leaned onto him with all my heart, then I know if God tells me no, it's for a greater purpose than he has. That's good. If God tells me no, I know it's not because he don't want me to have fun. I know it's not because he don't want me to do whatever it is I'm trying to do. I, God is telling me no because he's sovereign, and he knows a little bit more about the situation than I do. Amen. He, 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 Amen. Like he, he, he has a, 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 what's that, a, a better overview. He has a giraffe view of the whole situation That's good. while I have That's a turtle good. view of the That's situation. <laughs> and he sees a little bit for like, oh, oh there's, there's like a alligators down the, hold up, lioness, chill out. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. But <laughs> do alligators eat lions? Anyway, he knows there are some things down the way and he's saying, listen, I just need you to just hold on. 
but God, I want you, but God, no, 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 just, just don't right now. Don't, all right. So, so then here's my, here's my, this is my last point, and after that, I'll be a prop. So, uh, <laughs> so then we have, we have, we talk to God through prayer. Now, this is, this, this in y'all, this is me trying to help you build your relationship with God. This is, this is, first and foremost, this is what I'm trying to do. So we get to the point where we can knock off those agnostic errors of our lives. We can get rid of some of those atheist errors in our lives where we know he is the Lord and he becomes the Lord of all things in our lives. Amen. Here's how we do this. This is relationship building. Man, I'm talking about relationship building. I'm going to build relationship and you build any relationship with anybody through communication, through, through, through talking. You get to know each other. We know each other, we spend time on the phone over and over and over again, and I realize I know who she is, I know she is, she knows who I am, all that kind of stuff. This is what we're going to do with God. And this, this is, this is, I think this is a great way to do it. If you have no way of doing it, I think this is a great way to do it. Number one, every day, every day we meditate on this word day and night. Every day, if you stay, if you're married and you stay with your spouse and you don't wake up and it take a week for you to speak to your spouse on a regular basis, it's going to be some problems in the house at some point. So, so if God is a more important person in our life than our spouse, why do we spend Monday we talk to him, but then Mercy. we don't talk to him again until we go through something? Jesus. You understand know what I'm saying? Like now we want like, God, where you at? Like I've been here the whole time. I'm like, I'm still here. So, so, so we talk to God through prayer and then we allow God to talk to us through his word. In other words, but I got to get in his word. This, I, I know a lot of people always talk about, oh, yeah, no, I pray, my prayer every morning. Yeah, okay, I know you pray every morning, but do you get in his word every morning too? Because we're trying to have a conversation. Other than that, if it's just me praying, it's a monologue. Patrick, I, yes, like ma'am. It, it's interesting because when it comes to the word, the word nourishes us. Right. And so then it feeds prayer. You Correct. know, it's kind of like if, if, if I want to have a quality relationship, right, it's some way that we have to connect. And so in order for us to connect with the sovereign God, he did send his son and his son is the word. Amen. And that word, when we consume it, then now we can approach the throne of grace boldly and yeah. with confidence. And now I'm not asking something that I know that he wouldn't want me to have. Correct. Now I can stand on a promise. Yeah. I have something that I can go on. Amen. Yeah. That's the, good. And that's, that's another thing. Some of the things that we're praying for with the question is, is it his will? Y'all don't like that one. A lot of people don't like that. That's okay. And so we, we, we do all this, you know, spitting and shouting and, and, and chattering and teeth chattering and, and stuff like that. <laughs> but we, what, is, it, is it the will of God? So when it says, it, whatever you ask in his name, it's not just use the name. You can use the name all you want to, but the, the, but the name has to agree with the character and his will. Go ahead. I got something else about that mm -hmm. name thing. It's interesting, like when we have, like, like let's say if you give me a card, as a parent, I give one of my children a card and say, go to the store and get this. Right. So I have given them authority to use my finances to go and get something that I'm requesting. Well, because they're in relationship with us, they may assume well, I can get this and this and this and this and this. Mm -hmm. You use my name and I didn't sign off on it, so now take it back. Take it back, yeah, right. So but let me give you another one. If someone comes and they say, like, I, I don't smoke cigarettes. So if, if, if they say, hey, Patrick, and they, they know me, but they know my character. They know Patrick don't smoke cigarettes. So they say, man, yeah, Patrick told me that I can use some of the money to buy cigarettes. No, you, you, know, you, you, you lying, because Patrick, I know his character. You use the name. But that ain't going to work. That's not, that, that's not one of his requests. That's not, that's not, that's not, that's not how you roll. So, so let's go back with you using the Bible too. So again, I'm only giving you suggestions that I, I, I believe, I know, I believe work. And I'm asking you, apply these things to your life. So if I take the word of God and in the morning I, I, I listen to the word, whether you listen to it or you actually read it. And then I listen to the word and I hear something. And then check this out. I talk to God about what I heard. Oh, I talked to God about what I said. That's a way that you build communication. I listen to the word, John, Mark, listen, da, da, da. in the beginning was the word, blah, blah. Okay, wait a minute, God. I just heard what you said in the beginning. It said, but how is that? Like, I don't understand that. You know, can you help me now? You know what? Send me somebody or give me somebody's name that I can call to help me understand what I just read in your word, God. But I thank you. I appreciate the word. Or if it's I, you read something, y'all not going to be real with me. Or you read something and you don't like what you read. Amen. Like, God, that was cold how you did that. That, that I don't know, God. That wasn't cool. I, I, saw what you, I saw what you said or I, I, I read what happened and 
for real? You're going to let it happen like that? And, and now you have another emotion. Listen, you have another emotion that you have to work through and talk through with God. And I'm saying whatever your emotion is, whether you whether like you mad at him, whether you upset at him, whether you sad about it. I'm saying whatever the emotion, God is always the person you go to about your emotion. God is always the person you go to about what you care about. God is always the per always the person. Listen, you go to first. Don't you call Darnell first. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> 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 don't you call your pastor first don't call your mama them first your mama daddy them, them mama them now that's a people that's a whole group. don't call the, the the mother boy don't call the deacons you go to god first amen and if you go to god first he may be the only one that want to answer right then and there or he'll tell you who to go to so your business won't be spread all over the church amen so i start with god and I'm, if you start with god you're really going in with God. And so this is this relationship. And as I begin to build, I begin to say, okay, God, you know what? I, I kind of don't believe you in the area concerning my children. I, here's why. You know, write it down. Talk it out. So mm. you can move from him, just not just I being the shepherd. He can, be, he can be the Lord of your life. Do y'all understand Man. that? All right. Man. Come on, go ahead. So now Patrick just got into the part that, that, that was very sensitive to me. When Patrick asked us, excuse me, when Pastor Harrington asked us, <laughs> when he asked us to do that assignment, that was one of the, um, I'll say most, um, tough. it was a tough assignment, but mm -hmm. I was committed to trusting his leadership, right? Um, and to go ahead and to talk to God about w w what that thing was. So I'm here to tell you all, if you hadn't done the assignment, do the assignment. Uh, let me interrupt. Uh, okay, go. If it's just one, just take one. So my thing was list all of the things, mm -hmm. all the things that you that you trust God. And remember, I was saying even the part where you trust God a lot, we become we, that you still need prayer about that because you get a little bit prideful because you don't you don't really go to God no more about that because you feel like I got that part. But even in that, you like whatever it is, write all of the things where you trust Him, all the things in your life where you kind of back and forth with Him. All of the things where you don't trust them, write, write that list down, list it, like actually write it, pen and paper and write it. And then you may not be able to take all of them because it hurts. Yes, it does. Take one. Take one. If you have to take the easiest one to write or talk to God about, take that one thing, write and like physically do a journal of why I don't trust you, God in this area and make it detail just as for you. Detail as detailed as possible. And detailed as possible and then talk about it. Just take one and then begin to build from there. Go ahead. Yeah, and I, was, and, I, and I would like to say too, like don't panic off of the assignment. I hope I'm not saying it like to scare you away, but I would say like when, once I started writing and I started making that list and then started exhausting it, like it became a mirror. Like it was like I got a chance to see, I got a portrait of me. Mm -hmm. And that was a blessing because like you when sometimes you can go on through life and you don't even know where you wrestle with pride or arrogancy right. or haughtiness or, you know, entitlement or Damn. privilege. Cause that was, the, I'm just now gonna tell on myself. That was one of the, that was, those were the two that, that, that captured my heart. It was like, whoa. It was like, I prayed and I asked you for this and you didn't come through for me. Like I did ABC and you didn't give me DEF. Right. And, and, and it was in this assignment you all that I realized that obedience Obedience is not for the reward. The obedience is not for the reward. The obe getting to obey God is the reward. That's Amen. Good. That's good. So now I don't obey so that I can get DEF. Right. I obey because he asked me to. Amen. And it's out of a heart of worship and praise. And it's like, what? he's my shepherd. Yeah. And he is the Lord. Yeah. And that's that on that. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I mean, it'll just arrest your heart. Like, it's just good. Anyway, so I'm asking you to do the assignment. I don't know what the revelation or insight is that the Holy Spirit will give you, but I'm here to tell you by by my relationship with him, I believe that he would deal with you specifically with what you need. So now, my mind and my heart, I have resolved that I'm going to obey God. Mm -hmm. Amen. To the best of my God-given ability and uh, ability. And I have also resolved in my mind that I'm not going to get it right. Right. It's not going to be perfect. But the fact that I'm pursuing obedience in purity and holiness unto him yeah it's acceptable why it's by faith what you say is, is unto one is what you say 
Uh, what? For one, uh, we're not doing it for Oh, I know what people. you're talking about. Oh, we're not, oh yeah, serving, that's it. Mm -hmm. That was another C. Patrick T. He reminded me, y'all. Listen, when, when we serve, we're not serving, uh, we are not serve, we, we, we are not going forth in service for people, but to people. Right. So now I don't expect you to give me anything in return. Right. I'm doing this to you. For God. For God. Yeah, Amen. Right. When, I, when somebody, when I give a person a pedicure, like, I'm not, I mean, I, I do expect wages, but it's like, I don't expect anything other than that. Once that exchange is made, it's done. That transaction is closed. Yeah, Amen. Right. Once we do what God asks us to do, then that is that transaction closed. What you still, what, 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 what you did that to me? <laughs> and what if I give you ZWX? Like he don't give me, he don't give me one vial or anything. Right. I can't make a word of it. I can't right. understand it. And I'm telling you, like it's in that. I have to admit that that was one of my frustrations to him, Lord. I thought that if I raised, the, we brought the children up in the way they should go, and I mean, we took them through Christian school, and we 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 disciplined when we were supposed to, and we was da 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 da. da. I mean, we did everything. I wasn't expecting to get a ZW. Right. Like that, that wasn't what I was expecting. And that was one of the things that I had been harboring mm -hmm. unknowingly. It was lodged in my heart. And so uh, the other thing that I would like to share, too, is that as we make the Lord our shepherd, it will help us to manage the disappointments in life. That's good. It will help us to be able to navigate uh, the hurts and the pains. Like I can say... When we went through the, uh, the sermon series about the valley, mm -hmm. oh my goodness, so many insights and revelations came up as a result of that. But, um, you know, it was a, it's a rocky place. It is a tough place. It's not smooth. And I, in my mind, when I saw the picture, okay. thank you, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> when I saw this picture, it reminded me of the disappointments that I had encountered, the failed expectations that it was like, it was, it was a shadow for me. It, 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 it's not a, a, it wasn't a pleasant place. But then I, I realized that in the midst of the valley, this is where you grow. Yeah. And, and, and when you are in the midst of disappointments, the, the, the equivalent is for every disappointment, I will meet a divine appointment. Amen. 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 For every disappointment, there will be a divine appointment. And so with that being said, there, that's where that peace come in. It's like, I think about, I, I was sharing this with Patrick too. I was thinking about uh, David in Psalm 23 and then just thinking about the entire book of Psalms. You can see where David would like, uh, you would see his shepherding come out in the, in the chapters. Like when he said, he placed me upon my high rock, my um, that hiding place. Amen. And so you got this rock. Now they traveling through here. If a predator or a wolf or some kind, if the, if the shepherd had to put one of the sheep on top of the rock outside of harm's way, yeah. look, yeah. I believe that their protection came in the midst of the valley. You came to destroy my sheep. Right. But, I, but me being a loving shepherd that I am, I'm going to protect you. Amen. Amen. So just... In a way, go is it, No, I don't have anything else. Is 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 one of the things? Because I, I didn't want to steal what you were going to say. But but the valley, if y'all remember, the valley is not a destination. That was it. Yeah, it's not. Go. No, 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 go. No, no, no. No, no. So the valley is not the destination. The heartache, the 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 trials, Amen. the, the tribulations, the disappointment, mm. the fear, the letdown, the like whatever that is. That's not the destination. This is your through. This is your, I didn't have a better word, but it was just, this is your through. To your two. So if you're, <laughs> come on. This, this is, is your, your through, through to, to your two. Amen. Because that's it is a destination, yeah, you know? Yeah. It, 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 there is a destination I have in view. Amen. Right. And so even when you think, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. When you think about the word destination, y'all, I don't know how it is, but now my mind just see words. But in a way, the root word of destination would be destiny. There is a destiny. Yeah. That we are to reach a man. Yeah. And what disappointment. Yeah. What hurt, what pain. If, if we keep our eye on the shepherd, 
And I'm telling you, and look, look, oh my goodness, when we keep our eye on the shepherd, it, it, it keeps us from uh, nursing longer than we should. That's good. The hurt and the disappointment. Yeah. Now, we don't want to be oblivious, right? And, and assume that uh, I don't have a pain. Like, right. no, I'm hurting. And so I, I do want to share this too. Like, I did a little bit of a study uh, just looking at the nature of the sheep. And the sheep, their hooves, their front hooves are easily bruised. Hmm. If it, if you don't, if the shepherd does not trim them, then they can uh, it get it get hurt and it can hinder their walk to the point where they can't keep going on the journey. A skilled shepherd would say, mm, "It's time for a pedicure. Let me, <laughs> you know, let me condition your walk because Amen. if you don't remove those hard places, yeah. it's not going to be to your benefit." Yeah. But I cannot be obli ob oblivious to assume that I don't have any issues that need to be dealt with. Amen? Amen. And then an another point, and I know that you all can really identify with this, is that uh, if it's not a wolf, if it's not a That's lion, good. That's good. if it is not an obvious predator, and these creatures, sheep, are easy, pre like they, 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 they draw predators because they're defenseless creatures. Um, but one of their, their number one daily and obvious tormentors are flies. Mm. It's the little small things. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And now that touch different or hit different because I was telling the Lord like, I, 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 this, this sermon series has helped me dig deeper in my prayer life for real. And I can remember praying, telling the Lord, I said, why, is, why am I frustrated in my faith? I, I believe you to come through, yeah. but these clouds of doubt keep on trying to hide what I know I see. And in learning or discovering the nature of what torments the sheep, now I identify those little lies that come in my mind, those the flies of the enemy mm. to try to make me bang my head. And it's like, ooh, like I get so distracted. She said bang head because when, when, the, when the flies get into this, like I think they come through the nose mm -hmm. and they're trying to get rid of it and they can't go their finger through their nose. So they will bang their, <laughs> they will bang their head over mm -hmm. and over it's again so against a rock. Mm -hmm. trying to get it out and even in doing that they they end up hurting themselves a lot more and then not only that another thing is that sheep uh they they flow in flocks mm -hmm. so if it's a f if one is infested with flies or it was something else they have but anyway they get like scabs i want to say a scabies or mm -hmm. something but anyway they get something but if it's not treated quickly then it goes to the next person so i mean no, the, the next sheep mm -hmm. so now you can think about even us as people if we keep being around doubters and unbelievers or people that will contaminate your faith right. before you know it then yeah. you you done picked up something else or or deal with your own doubt and your own faith like if you don't really if you don't deal with that quickly like mm -hmm. when you when it happens like don't put it off like you need to handle it because even though it's small right now, so that was a small offense, or you know that was a, a small. Oh, cut that's or, good, preacher. You know see, there you go. That was a, that was a nice. you know a, it's like we're not gonna like that. it's okay. No, we need to deal with it because if it made you feel some kind of way, this is just me again. If I go home and tell my wife about something that was that was that was an offense large enough or I go to the barbershop and tell somebody that was an offense large enough there was something large enough for me to have to have to have a conversation about it that's good it, it, now you might not want to go to the person that's fine but again remember we're talking about making the Lord your shepherd mm -hmm. if you don't go to nobody you go to the Lord about it to not say anything about it to not to talk to God about it yeah. to be like yeah I am, I'm, I'm just gonna brush that off no 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 the fact that I came home and said, baby, you know what this might be? Like, the fact that you said <laughs> something means it's enough for me to have a conversation with either God or the person who did it. Amen? Amen. All right. Bef before you go. Go ahead. No, no, no. No, no, you go. You, are you finna leave this picture? All right. So, so I want to I wanna reiterate something. This is a shepherd leading the flock. All right. So that means when we're going through this, and it, it, not, it was nothing of our own that we did. Mm. And we're going through this. I did, I did everything right, but I'm still going through this. That is God leading us. He knows that there is something 
at the end of this that's going to help us out. And then that, that's, that's the part when, when you can't see his hand, you, you trust his heart. Okay, so now don't move on because okay. that'll bring up a good, that you brought up a good point. The shepherd is doing the leading and that's what a shepherd does. He's not doing anything different than what he do. Wherever the destination is, according to the shepherd, this is the best route to take. Yeah. And we have to trust him, right? right? So now I want to go back to the, t the title of the sermon series is The Lord is My Shepherd. Mm -hmm. Lord means self-existing one. Yeah, yeah. Grab a hold of that. The self-existing one, David said, is my God. Right. Amen. Amen. He is the one who's tending well to my well-being. Yeah. I'm talking about the one. Let me, let me, I'm going to give you all the definition. I know that sounded real country, but I want to give sure. it to you. Yeah, it's Jehovah, the existing one, the one bringing into being. Mm. This is the one that's David Shepherd now. Life giver. He who brings to pass. Performer of his promise. We can stop there and we can just <laughs> shout right there. The one who keeps his promise is his shepherd. Mm. And what does a shepherd do? A shepherd tends well and rears the sheep. Amen. He ensures that the sheep will get to the place where they need to get to. Right. So because the self-existing one, it, now this is if we make him, if we make the, the one that's David Shepherd, mm -hmm. and he left, he, left, he left the message, he left the letters for us, amen? amen? If we do the same thing David did, then we can trust that we can get to where David is, amen? amen. Which is in God's heart, amen? Right. So don't panic. Don't flip, don't do none of that. As, as the storms of life come in and the valleys run deep and the winds whip up, we don't panic. What, what is it? It's just indicators that, oh, I need to know them a little bit better. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I need to know them a little bit better. Oh, you want me to know you as my provider? Oh, okay. Yeah. So, Lord, I thank you for my provision today. Amen. You want me to know you as my healer in the sick room? I, now look, we don't want to visit these places, but these <laughs> are the places where revelations come to pass. Amen? Amen. We, actually, we actually learn and find out and discover who God really is. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So I want you to look at this picture, too. This is a picture, typically, when, when it begins to get a little darker, the sheep, the shepherd, I mean, the shepherd doesn't, he doesn't lead in front. When it gets to get a little bit darker, he backs up and he leads amongst them. I so love this, it. this goes along, too, with through the valley, that I don't fear because, because he is with me. So, mm. so the, the key thing about that is like, okay, even, so my, Shamika and I were talking about, the scripture says, when mother and father leave you. So it's like, not that they won't, it's when they, whether they abandon you or whether they, they die, whatever the case may be. There's going to come a point where they're not going to be there. But God will be with you always through all of these things, no matter what you're going through. So you got to, again, this <laughs> trust in God and knowing it because we can't see him. So I get it. I get it. But trust in God that he's with us always takes relationship building. That when I am in a valley, if you are in a valley, if you're in a dark time in your life, know that God is with you. Yes, I know we wish sometimes he would keep us from going, doing, going through it. But remember what Shamika said, it is in those times where we truly learn who God is. It's in those times where God can really reveal himself. Because guess what? We're really looking for him now in those particular times of our lives. And do not take in or do not give in to the temptation to stay in the valley. Yeah. Don't pitch your tent in the valley. Amen. Because this is where we get weary and we get tired. So when, when we face a valley, no, we have to still go through it to get to the promise. Right. Amen. Amen. Um, it was something else that I wanted to share too. Um, so she used the word, you look at the rest of the notes. Uh, <laughs> right. One of the words she used is worry. So, so the Bible says when you, it says, uh, um, don't worry, instead pray. All right. So the NLT version says it's a way. When you worry, pray. So it's not like, if you're going to worry, don't pray. That's not really it. Since you're worrying, that's when you need to pray. And it says, ask God for what you need and thank him for everything he's done. And when you do that, it's something about the peace of God yes. from doing that, that just, it just guards your heart. It's just, it just keeps you. So, okay, God, I'm worrying right now. That's a real emotion. 
God, I'm, 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 I'm afraid right now. That's a real thing. <laughs> this is what I need. Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. This is what I need. But now that I've told you what I need, let me thank you for everything that you've ever done. Now, now I've done that in my life. At nighttime, when everybody's gone to sleep and I'm just kind of worried about whatever, I go into this, you know, this prayer. I'm like, okay, so you sent worry to nudge me or text me and say, hey, man, God said, talk to a column right quick. I'm like, okay, appreciate it, worry. And so I go into <laughs> prayer and <laughs> I go into prayer and I say, God, this is what I need. Then I start thanking him for everything he's ever done for me in my life. Now, because I've had the experience of having a mom who had multiple sclerosis, as multiple sclerosis progress, her help digress, that I was able to use just the things that my mom couldn't do and begin to thank God for all those things that she couldn't do that I could do, that I could wipe my steps, that I could, that I could scratch my eyes, and I could comb my head, and I could scratch my head, and I could, get you know, wall, I could get up walk, could get the flower, like all those things that we take for granted. She couldn't do that. I can't stretch my arm out and hug my child. Like, she couldn't do those things. So I began to just, I run that list. And by the time I get through running that list, or I don't even finish, halfway through the list, I'm asleep. I mean, so now remember now, I couldn't go to sleep. Toss it to her, God. Uh, uh, okay, okay, where was it? Call him. All right, all right, let me call. And I call God. Hey, God, how you doing? Where told me to call you? All right, listen, this is what I need. God, you know what? Let me thank you for... And you know what, Patrick, you know, <laughs> you know what, and I, and I think a lot of times we kind of feel bad if you all have done that. You probably feel, feel kind of guilty or shame for falling asleep in prayer. Right. But that is like one of the best sleeps to best have. Sleep you, it's get. better to fall asleep in prayer and communicating with God right. and the Lord than, than falling asleep, you know, right. worrying. Right. Like it's okay. It's in order. All right. Oh, going back to the word, like one of the one of the, the comforts and know it is getting in the word and learning the promises. Mm -hmm. If you run out of a prayer for yourself, I would like to encourage you to maybe just get a chapter and make it your prayer. Like it's his word, like give it back to him right. and just personalize it. So don't be intimidated by the word. I think that a lot of times we, I really don't know why we avoid it other than it's a trick of the enemy mm -hmm. because it's a book to help us to live a better life. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Uh, and so the Lord has indeed provided us what we need. And so if we know that the dark times in our lives are going to come, like we know that sunny days won't last forever. We know that storm clouds are going to roll in. They're actually going to produce rain and lightning, maybe. It, uh, winds are going to whip up and all these things. When we have the word to anchor us, then that's that peace that guards us. Amen. That if just in case I don't make it through this storm, I am okay. Why? Because I know I'm in the will of God. Amen. It may not be that tomorrow is mine, but if I live in faith today and I approach tomorrow faithfully, then I can rest assured that God got me. Yeah, but good. if I go astray and I am isolated and I, and I you know, just kind of walk away from his word because I'm not with it, then you're leaving yourself open prey. Mm -hmm. You know, like when, when those little small little uh, flies or a big predator or whatever come in your life, you don't have a defender to help you to get rid of it. Amen. So it's like it's to our benefit. I know that I know that Patrick and I have said a lot of things, but who, whoever is listening, wherever you this word may find you like, don't give up on God because he has right. not given up on on us. Like he is still believing us to believe him. Yeah. And it's our responsibility as messengers, as believers of God, to stir the appetite and the faith of you to get in it. Yeah. I cannot promise you that it, all your days are gonna be sunny and blue. Like that is, that's just not life. But real life is when life does happen to you. And I am here or whomever in your community that God has blessed you with to encourage you. I pray that we are always strong enough to give you a word of encouragement. Amen. Should it be that, look, it don't pan out the way we want to, I still will want to be a, a vehicle or a person that will give you comfort that you're going to get through this. However, I need you to get in the word for yourself that if you do pick up the phone and don't get a reply. Yeah. If you do send out a text message and you don't get a re respond back, 
If you do reach out and extend for help and there is no one to help, I'm telling you to encourage yourself in the Lord. Amen. It, when you get this word down inside of you, it just automatically does what it do. Amen. I, I was sharing with one of my coworkers. I said, I don't know. Like when we eat an orange, we don't see the vitamin C. <laughs> we say I'm going to get an orange, but the, but the orange has the essentials that we need to build our immune system. Yeah. The word is designed to defend and protect and provide for you. How does it work? The all I can tell you is through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now ask me about him. Now that's a whole nother subject, but he works. Amen. Amen. And he is a good special friend. Amen. He will give you insight on stuff that look other people be like, how you know that? I don't know other than my super friend. And if you don't know him, then I can't. <laughs> you, need to, you need to come and be his friend. Amen. Amen. You got anything else? I don't think so. You don't? Amen. So we thank you guys for uh, being a part of today's sermon and the sermon series. It will be concluded. Um, Shamika going to uh, end with prayer, and um, I think we'll be out from that. Uh, if anything, y'all, I, I want to give you one takeaway is to please do the assignment. Like, just just pick one Try thing. Try this word. Just pick one thing and, and do the assignment. I promise you it's going gonna, it's gonna to help out. Um, it's going to help out tremendously. Oh, I forgot the next Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, if you guys decide that you want to be um, uh, financial givers to Inspire Church, plenty of ways to do that. Uh, if you want to do it electronically, you can text the word INSPIRE to 1-888-364-4483. Uh, uh, if you're a cash apper, you can give uh, cash app at dollar sign Inspire Church Memphis, or you can go on the World Wide Web at www.inspirechurchmemphis.org forward slash give. Uh, you can send cashier's checks or money orders to Inspire Church, P.O. Box 111432, Memphis, Tennessee, 38111. That's if you found any value of anything that we've ever said, anything that we've encouraged you, or anything that we have uh, brought, you know, there was some conviction to help you do better. And you see Inspire Church is a great place to, uh, to give financially. We ask you guys to continue to give and uh, pray about it. Pray about what you want to give, how much you're going to give, and how often you're going to give, and let God decide that, uh, with that, uh, what you're going to do with that. And invite them to come. And, and so, you can say it. And we would also like to invite you to come and be a part of Inspire Church as well. Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah. we, we, I, one of the, one of the things, again, like I was sharing, a part of growing in a community, that's that, safety and protection knowing that you're not alone Amen. like none of us are perfect but it's something about when you have a brother and sister to help encourage you maybe they're stronger or better in the area that where maybe you may be weak and by the same token the body needs you as well Amen. so the word that has gone forth is to encourage the believer but if you are an unbeliever then i would pray that your eyes will be open and that you will receive this glorious light in Amen. jesus name in jesus name so uh, if you desire to give your life to christ you can do so if you're here today sitting with us today and you want to give your life to christ now is the opportunity to be able to do that amen uh, uh, you don't have to come up but you can talk to us afterwards and we'll be happily happy um, to congratulate you on a decision that you made for god uh, if you walked away from god and you want to come back and uh, you know you you want to you want to make the Lord your shepherd, you know, maybe he's Lord and maybe, you know, maybe he's the shepherd in some areas and you got to work on him being Lord so he can be Lord in all areas. If yes. that's you and you want to come back to God, we, we, we're here for that as well. Um, if you want to be a part of Inspired Church, be a member of Inspired Church and uh, you want this to be your church home where we can all uh, grow together as you give unto us, we'll give back unto you and we'll all worship the Lord, then you can do so today as well. Uh, you can get yes. with us afterwards, and uh, we'll be happy to, uh, to sit down and talk. Uh, if you're watching online, whether it's on the website, Facebook, or YouTube, and you are any of those people that this, you want to give your life to Christ, Amen. you want to come back, or you want to be a part of Inspired Church, uh, please send us an email at info at inspiredchurchmemphis.org, info at inspiredchurchmemphis.org. Yes dot org and uh we're gonna let god be god and we're gonna glorify his name for the decision that you make yes. uh next week uh we'll be starting our new sermon series again go out on the website and uh, uh register for 
uh, next week. Next week, we will not have virtual service that morning at 9.30. It will be in-person service that night at 5 p.m. Yes. And we'll be working on terrible sermon series. Next week's sermon, so you can read ahead and you come and we can do some amens. Next week's sermon, we'll be dealing with the sower, the parable of the sower and the seed. Uh, so make sure you go ahead and read it. I think it's in, it's in Matthew 13, uh, Luke 8, and Mark 4. And read all of those parables and how Mark said it and how Luke said it and how Matthew said it so we can come together and agree with God in the Word of God. Amen. Amen. I like that. Agree with God in the Word of God. Amen. amen. Yeah. Come on, pray us out, shall we? Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the opportunity to go forth in your word. We thank you so much for your Holy Spirit ministering to our hearts, giving us insight, giving us revelation, giving us life to be able to live on this side. Thank you so much. Thank you for seeing about us. Thank you for your great care. Thank you for being our Lord, the existing one, our shepherd. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord God. We got the best shepherd ever. Amen. Amen. And we thank you, Lord God, that you weren't hired to do this. You chose to do this. I thank you so much for your loving care. Thank you, Lord, for seeing us. Uh, all mixed up and messed up and you didn't run instead you chose to take time to care for us thank you so much thank you lord god for your faithfulness thank you so much for being so patient thank you lord for your love thank you that is in abundance god that you don't run out thank you so much i pray lord god for anyone that is listening as uh, that's under the sound of my voice, they may be discouraged, they may be battling depression, or they just may be just having some issues, God. I ask you now to bless in the name of Jesus. Shoo away the, the doubting, the, the doubts, the lies, the, the anything, the misconceptions, the views of who, who you have created us to be, Lord. Whatever it is that's keeping us from clearly ex uh, uh, seeing you and accepting you, Lord, I ask you in the name of Jesus for victory to come to pass in their lives. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I pray that, um, that, that, that you have your way and that our week will be great. And I just thank you in the name of Jesus, uh, your blessings upon your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you.